bless your name we thank you for how far you have led us throughout today till this evening be thou glorified in the mighty name of Jesus as we go into worship today we pray oh Lord that you be with us you guide us and we will bless your holy name for that in Jesus name Father in heaven oh how we love you we lift your name in all the earth may your kingdom be established in our presence as your people we declare your mighty word blessed be
for bringing us here this evening. The entrance of your word bringeth life and understanding to the simple. Lord, we bless you for today. Lord, you minister to us this evening and have your way in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worshipped. pleasure Monday. Grace to take this third week of June. It's going to be a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Our team is in times like this. And then the first week we'll try to answer some questions like what time are we? And we'd like to we went into some scriptures to see that we are in a time that is varied, sort of. We are in a time of famine, we are in a time of rising, we are in a time of wickedness, we are in a time of spiritual warfare. The time is just varied. You can't actually pinpoint that this is the time that we are in. In the last three weeks in this nation, you realize that we have come into a time of serious wickedness in times of rape. So we are in a very difficult and a perilous time. We went ahead to look at the fact that how should we react in times like this? And we said that the major thing that we need to do in times like this is to wake up from our slumber as Christians and uh, be alert and know that you are in a warfare and also that you are ready for an assignment. Be alert, be awake because God's glory will rise upon us for the assignment that is going to give unto us. What we should do in times like this, we went into details, that was the second, Tuesday, uh, the second Monday, we said that this is a time for us to love God more, and this is a time to praise Him more. This is a time to show forth an act of gratitude to Him for everything that He's been doing. This is also the time to take care of the poor. We spent some time to look into that in details. And then we said that this is a time to proclaim his gospel, asking him to arise on us and give us the grace to do it. The time to intercede more and the time of hope. We also went on to discuss the issue of what we should expect in times like this. We said we should expect divine visitation. Divine visitation to the left and divine visitation to the right. For those of us that are under the grace, the divine visitation of his power working in us. Now, for those that want to pitch their tent with the enemy and become the enemy of the church or the enemy of God, certainly this is our own time of judgment also. We went also to look at the truth to know in times like this. And I know that God is going to help us mightily again in this new week. Shall we bow our hearts as we pray? Eternal Father, thank you for bringing us to this third Monday in the month of June. We thank you for the things that you have permitted us to know and to see from the engrafted world. As we go into another week, open our eyes to see the truth of your word again in Jesus' name. Cause an illumination to come upon every line, and so that our heart will rejoice and jump at it. Thank you, Hitana Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we're going to look at what we shouldn't do in times like this. What we shouldn't do in times like this. And I want you to please listen very well. We're going to take our story from Luke chapter 4. We want to look at that scripture very closely. I know you know the story. It's the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. And I want you to please listen as we look at some of the don'ts that we should look at in times like this. Because we are also in the same time. The enemy is bringing temptation left and right, affliction there, so many things there. So I'll begin to read. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. That was a natural affection. There's nothing wrong about that. 40 days, no water, no food. Definitely, there must be hunger. Verse 3, And the devil said unto him, 
The saying of the devil has not ceased in times like this. He's saying a lot of things into our life. His, his, his purpose is that we should deny the faith in God. His purpose is that our, 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 our zeal for the things of the kingdom and for the master should go down. His purpose is to make us to be lukewarm. One leg in, one leg out. So the devil is still speaking. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it is it be made bread. What an interesting thing. The scripture says that we are living stones. And in times like this, we must beware. The church must beware. Our leaders must be, must be aware also that the enemy is still using the same trick. We're seeing in the, we, we've seen cases of motivating the people, whining them, turning them to bread, so to say. Giving them reasons why they have to give this type of offering, this type of offering, this type of this. Creating fear in them. Telling them a lot of things about their past, about their, about, about their genealogy, a lot of things. Trying to just manipulate us at this time. So we need to be careful and we must not fall into the prey of allowing them to turn us into bread. And the only way that you can do that is for you also to rise up, be awake and go into the scriptures and begin to read the scriptures yourself. So we are also in a time where lively stones have been turned into bread. You can see the cases all around manipulating and turning the congregation, turning everybody, creating fear. So we shouldn't fall prey of becoming a lively stone that will be turned to bread. That's the first thing that we should be aware of. The second thing in times like this that I want us to look at again is in verse 5. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, and showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Yes, a lot of people are falling prey to this now in times like this. They are silently worshipping and bowing down to the devil because of the time that we are in. A lot of temptation, a lot of things. The, de the enemy is showing them that it doesn't really matter. Cut corners like this. Check the measurement like this. Don't use that correct composition. Do this, do that. Cut corners in this way. In, a, in, 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 in various ways, the enemy is making us to bow for him in order to get the kingdom. Some have gone into some occultic practices in order to have this kingdom at all cost. Some have gone into so many evil practices. So we shouldn't in this time like this fall to the temptation of the enemy. We must not bow down for him. It is true he can give us the kingdom. But don't forget what the scripture says. That if you gain the whole world, you have all the kingdom and lose your soul. What does it profit you? So we must be careful in times like this not to bow to the dictate of the enemy. No matter what is showing us. Every apple that the devil is giving has one. The first bite, the second bite, you won't be able to take it again. So you must be careful in times like this not to bow to him. It's tempting. It's really, really tempting. You find people falsifying their age because they want to get employment. You find people changing so many things because they don't want to leave work. Christians, so to say. And so you, they, they, they are silently bowing because they want to get a particular kingdom. We shouldn't join them in times like this. The third one is what happened to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ won the first, he won the second, and then he said, okay, let me see if I can get you on this. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from thence, for it is written, he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time that dash thy foot against a stone. What a wonderful scripture. The whole, that the, uh, the whole architecture of church building will enable you to understand what is referred to as pinnacle. The, the modern architecture does not really give it to us. Now the pinnacle is that thing you have to get out of the building to actually see 
the pinnacle of the church. And for anybody to have gone out to stay on the pinnacle of the church, there is nowhere so to say that you will not be able to see. But look at the trick. You can't see the pinnacle from inside. You have to go out to see the pinnacle. So you must be careful that you are not tempted out of Christ in times like this. To come and see the beauty of the world. To come and see the Jerusalem in coat of the world. And give you that it doesn't really matter. Nobody is there as a copper. Nobody sees you here. You can do a little bit of fornication there. You can do a little bit of teaching there. You can do No, 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 no. Don't allow him to take you to a Jerusalem that will make you to want to test your faith. Or commit you into sin. And let you know that it doesn't really matter. Nobody is seeing you. You can do it. And then nobody will know. No, 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 no. Don't allow him to take you out of the fold. Don't allow him to take you out of the church. Don't allow him to build up another friendship in your life that will not have any value to your life in terms of spiritual things. So don't go out of the temple to see the pinnacle. Everything that you need is in his house. His praise, his prayer is in his house. Don't be tempted. There is nothing outside there. If you stay on the pinnacle, you are going to see a lot of things. It is true because you are elevated. But the danger is, don't fall prey at this time. It is it, it is a challenging time. It is a time that we are trusting God to help us to stand in the faith. Because the temptation is to the left and to the right. But we also must be cautious of the fact that we must not allow him to take us out of the Christian fold. Don't say, oh, they are not visiting me. I am not going to go to that church again. Oh, they are not calling me. Nobody cares in that church. It's not like that. It might be the trick of the enemy to take you out and take you to the pinnacle and then show you and then something bad might occur. So we must be careful at this time not to bow to the devil, to resist him, not to, not, not to allow him to, to, to make us to become bread so that we will, we will stay right with him. The other thing that we should not do and in, the, in times like this is that we should... We shouldn't go down. We shouldn't go down. We shouldn't go down. I'm going to take that from Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. We are looking at what we shouldn't do in times like this. Exodus chapter 17 is telling us the story of Moses. How Moses lifted up his hand when the children of Israel were at war. 17 I read 11 and 12. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand was heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and all, stayed up his hands. The one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. You notice from this scripture that while Moses raised his hand on the eel, Israel prevailed against Amalek. But when Moses grew weary and brought down his hands, Hamalek prevailed over Israel. And in times like this, there is a possibility of some level of weariness coming into our lives. Because some expectations are not met. Because some projections are not going the way we thought it should go. Because some investments are not yielding what we think that it should yield. Moses was tired. It's natural to be tired. Don't forget what we read in Luke earlier on. Jesus fasted for 40 days and was weak and then hungered. Moses was tired and brought down his hands. But one thing about that, while I say that you should not go down in this time like this, is that that tiredness of Moses met defeat for Joshua and his men. It's natural for him. Look at the age that he was lifting up his hand. It's natural for him to put down his hand after some time. Nobody can 
successfully lift up his hand for 45 minutes at the 70 and above. So what was happening to Moses was natural. But Moses did not realize that the destiny of some people is hanged upon that him lifting up his hand. And that's why in times like this we must come to understand certain things. That was why I was sharing last week talking about what that scripture talked about the poor will always be in our midst and that those at your gate we must take care of them. Moses' tiredness put some destinies in a vulnerable position. At that time, it was natural for him to be tired but some destinies were in vulnerable position. Brothers and sisters, if you go weary in your mission in times like this, in your assignment, in that which you are doing for God in the church, maybe even as an usher, maybe even as a child evangelist, or even if you are a sanctuary keeper, you will put some destinies in a vulnerable position. You might not know. You will put some destiny in vulnerable position. That's why at, in times like this, we must ask God to help us not to go down. And help us to continue to lift up our hands in court. If you get tired of the divine assignment God has given you, some destinies will suffer for it in times like this. A lot of people are depending on you in times like this. Maybe God is using you to intercede. and Maybe at every 12 midnight and you don't know to the extent that that prayer is working. If you cease to be prayerful in times like this, your generation will be put in a, in, a, in a sad situation. My generation, my situation, my circumstance, my brother's circumstance, somebody's family might be put in a bad situation. If you don't live a pure life in times like this, some destinies might be truncated in times like this. That's why I said that in times like this, we must not go down at all. Your spiritual tiredness is a danger to your generation, to my generation. Especially those of us that God has committed certain responsibility into our hands. You might be the head of the choir, you might be the head of the youth, whatever. You might even be the drama. is a responsibility. And people are looking up unto you in times like this. So your spiritual tiredness is a danger to your generation, to my generation. Some people depend on your prayers to succeed. I said that earlier. That's why we must not go down. Some people depend on your prayers to succeed. You don't know, but God is counting. God has enlisted you to fill in a gap. It might even be a nation. It might be a nation. It might be a family. It might be a clan. Some people depend on your prayers to succeed in times like this. Some people will fail if you fail. That's why we must not go down in times like this. We must ask God to help us to stand in times like this. Some people will get things wrong if you don't set the right example in times like this. They will get it wrong. Some destinies will go home empty in times like this if you go down. If they come to meet you and you are too tired to offer them words of life and power, your tiredness in your mission has implications for others. So we must ask God to help us in times like this not to go down. We must ask Him. So that's why we must be awake in times like this because we cannot have, we, we cannot just slumber and then find ourselves suddenly going down. Some destiny also can go with us. The other thing that we shouldn't do in times like this, as much as possible, we look at Nehemiah chapter 4. In times like this. Don't forget we said that in times like this, you must not allow the enemy to take you to the outside the church, to go and, and check the, the pinnacle of the church. You must not become a prey. Don't allow anybody to manipulate you and deceive you with with certain revelations that will enslave you and make, and make you to become bread. And so that 
they, they are just eating on you all the time and they create fear in your life. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4 is a wonderful scripture and I want us to listen again to what God has for us there. He's warning us, he's warning us that our strength must not decay. If there is decay in our strength, we will not be able to build the wall. We will not be able to build the wall if there is decay in our strength. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 10. It's talking about decay. If your strength is decayed, you won't be able to build the walls that God is asking us to build. I read quickly, chapter 4, verse 10, Nehemiah. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of bodies is decayed. And there is much rubbish. So that we are not able to build the wall. In times like this, we must not allow our strength to decay. Because we will not be able to build the wall. We will not be able to do the assignment. What is our strength? Don't forget that the scripture says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. In other words, don't allow anything to corrupt the communion that you are having with God through his spirit in you. That must not be traded for anything in times like this. Because any form of decay to your strength, the enemy is going to hit hard. If your strength is decayed, you won't be able to build the walls that God will have you build. And others won't achieve the victory that God positioned you to help them achieve. That's the, that's, that's the reason why our strength must not decay at this time. Say no. Say no to spiritual weakness. Say no to spiritual weakness in times like this. Arise in times like this. Get back to the place of prayer. Consecration and spiritual strength. Because we must not allow any form of decay. The body bearer, we must not allow any form of decay. If we do, we might have some problems in getting things done for ourselves. So, what we shouldn't do in times like this, we, before we go to another thing to discover, is number one, I said, we must be careful of the temptation that Jesus Christ went into, and God also gave him victory over it. And the same God is available. This, the, 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 the enemy is still speaking in times like this. It is we that must determine that we will not listen to his instruction. So that we will not become a prey unto his vices. We want to look at our strength in times like this. Our strength in times like this. We're trying now to conclude the entire teaching. But first of all, let's look at our strength in times like this. Second Samuel, Second Samuel. I want you to please listen and look at this scripture very well. Second Samuel chapter seven verse eighteen. Every one of us in times like this must be ready to consistently do what David did. If you want to have strength. If you don't want your strength to decay in times like this. It must be a regular pattern of our life. In times like this. Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 18. Then went King David in. And sat before the Lord. He went in. Shut the door. And sat before the Lord. That's our strength in times like this. If we don't cultivate this strategy to always go in, sit before the Lord, commune with Him, pray, study the scriptures, ask Him to explain certain things, we might be running foul 
of our life in times like this. It's a very wonderful strategy that David used. He shot himself in, sat before the Lord, and he said, we must be able to always sit in. Great time. Because our strength is in God. Let's as much as possible stop 24-7 assignment without resting to take strength back from God. To renew our strength from God. We must create the time, no matter how busy we are, to always sit in and sit before the Lord and get things done. Don't forget the scripture talks about we should pray without ceasing. In fact, in Psalm 91, very wonderful scripture. When he's talking about the precedence, we know for a thousand before you, uh, to the left, to the right, no evil will come before you, he will give charge over you. There's something in verse 4 of Psalm 91 that I want us to see. Because we are looking at our strength in times like this. Our strength in times like this is in shutting the door. Staying indoors. Creating time. Creating what I call a Sabbath time. A time of rest. Whereby you travel in prayers. You sing, you worship God on your own. I'm not talking about collective one. It's good. Because the scripture talks about we should not forsake the assembly of each other. But you need to build your own individual spiritual strength in times like this. Psalm 91 verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wing shall thou trust. Now look at the last line. Very important. His truth. His truth. Which is his word. Shall be thy shield and thy buckler in times like this. His truth. So in times like this we must create time to go into the word of God. In times like this we must create time to, to digest the word of God. Read the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. Ask God to interpret it to us because he said, His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Psalm 37. Psalm 37 verse 7. We're looking at our strength in times like this. Look at it. Rest in the Lord. I've said it earlier when I was talking about you shutting in yourself and sitting before God. One translation says, be silent to the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Be silent. Listen to Him. That's where our strength is in this time. And wait patiently for Him. Wait patiently for Him. That's, that's where our strength will be now. Rest in Him. Be silent before Him. Shut yourself in. Take time to study the scriptures. Take time to listen to messages. Take time to pray. Take time to, to, to build your most holy faith in times like that. That's where the strength is. Psalm 55. Psalm 55 verse 17. Fifty-five seventeen. <laughs> This is where our strength is. Look at what David said. David said, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. And cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. The assignment that we have on hand in the society now is so much that to get time to pray is becoming pretty difficult. And in times like this, if you want even divine knowledge for your profession, you need to create time. Evening, morning, at noon, will I cry unto him. So he just brought us in the point of what David did. David went in, shot himself, sat before the Lord, cried unto him. And this is where our strength is going to be in times like this. And I know that God, in his infinite mercy, in times like this, will indeed help us. And our life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. 
at this point for this week, I want us to pray some prayers in times like this. And we might be standing in for our children and grandchildren in times like this to pray. And it's important that we do. As we close next week, by the grace of God, we are going to take some prayer points. But for this week, as we close, I want us to look at two scriptures to pray. The first scripture is Genesis chapter 34. Genesis chapter 34, in times like this. I'll read verse 1 and verse 2. And that not the daughter of Leah, which she bore unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when she came, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, the prince of the country, saw her. He took her and lay with her and defiled her. Strategic plan of El. To destroy destiny. She wasn't aware. That the enemy has set some prey. And, 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 and looking for her. They've been. Practicing how they will do the evil. Look at. She went in the evening. She went out to see the daughters of the land. Normal walk. Normal walk. And then. She came. The son of Hamor destroyed her destiny in times like this. And you can see in the last three, four weeks of this kind of thing repeating himself in various ways. Look at that lady, the, the, the undergraduate girl. Look at the one there. Almost two incidences in the same area of the city of Ibado. Repeating itself. So there is no new time that we are in. We are in the same time. You can see this is this is rape. So we are going to pray. I want you to arise where you are there and pray that Lord, every Shechem of this generation will not destroy the destiny and defile any of your children. I want us to tell God in time, we are in a perilous, dangerous time that they will not destroy. Look at it. This one was going out in the evening. The other girl in Bini was going out in the evening also to go and read. So you are going to pray. Every spirit, every demonic strategy, every monitoring spirit to destroy the destiny of your children will fail in the name of Jesus. Will fail in the name of Jesus. They will not defile any of your children. Nobody will waylay them. Whatever the enemy is planning will fail. All their tricks will be exposed. In times like this, God will create an edge of fire around our children, wherever they are under the globe. In the name of the Lord of hosts. Nobody will derail them. Nobody will destroy their destiny. Nobody will cause any, any ugly incident that will bring sorrow into our life in times like this over our children. The angel of the Lord will keep watch over them in the name of the Lord of hosts. Day and night in the name of the Lord of hosts. Mention the name of your children wherever they are. Not only the small ones, even adults. Even adults. Even adults. Look at the story of that man that the gate man, gate man, the gate man that he trusted, tricked him. He will have murdered him. We have some it, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are in a time that is, that is evil. That Lord, the spirit of Shechem will not walk over us. Nobody will plan evil in any form over us. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to round up our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. The second one is very similar. But this time around we are taking the story from Second Samuel. We are praying. But we're taking again from 2 Samuel chapter 13. Very similar to the first one. But this one is talking about evil advice. 2 Samuel chapter 13 is a story that you know very well also. 
But since we are talking about in times like this. And it came to pass after this. That Absalom, the son of David, had a fierce sister. Whose name was Tamar. And Ammon, the son of David, loved her. And Ammon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. And she was a virgin. And Ammon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Ammon had a friend. This is where we are going. Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonabab. The son of Shimei, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. The end of the story showed that Jonadab was an agent of the devil. He corrupted the, he, 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 he corrupted the mind. He gave an advice to corrupt the mind of his friend. To the extent that the destiny of Tamar also was destroyed. You are going to pray. For your children, especially those ones in 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 higher institution and those ones that are already working, because you see professionally now there is a lot of evil taking place. They will just take a paper to them to go and sign, and he won't know that he has implicated himself. Friends, you are going to pray that every friend that has the spirit of Jonadab, God should severe that relationship between your daughter, your son. In times like this, no evil friendship. Look at it. Very when you when you finish the story, you will see how 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 devilish plan that he made and gave that this is how you can get it on. This is how you can get the thing done, and the thing worked. You are going to pray, Lord. In times like this, I will not be corrupted. My children will not be corrupted. Professionally, they will not be implicated. No evil friend. Any friend that has not added value to their life in times like this, God should just break the relationship in the name of the Lord. He might even be a courtship. It might be a relationship that, that God, God has not assigned your daughter or your son to go into. And, they, and he's insisting that this is the person I want to marry. Every evil relationship in times like this, God will break it. Every relationship that will not bring glory to God in, in our life, in the life of our world, God will break it in times like this. No matter how far they've gone with that friend, if that friend is evil, because God sees all hearts, God break that friendship. Deliver us from the hand of Juniper in the name of the Lord of hosts. We will not, we will not take evil counsel. We will not become victim of evil counsel that will make us to, to commit error in the name of the Lord of hosts. In the name of the Lord of hosts. Let's pray. Let's mention the name of the children and mention that God will help them out. Let's begin to appreciate God for this third week again. As we have gone into the word of God in times like this, we have looked at what we shouldn't do. Tell the Lord that Lord help me not to go down. Lord, I don't want my strength to decay. I don't want to bow to whatever the enemy is telling me. I don't want to be tricked out of the fellowship of Christ and be taken to the pinnacle of the temple. I don't want to become a prey. I don't want, I don't want to become a prey that will be turned into bread. I want to stand still with you. In times like this, make me strong. In times like this, Lord, make me strong. In times like this, Lord, make me strong. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we are grateful for this week. We thank you because you have indeed assisted us again to look at the engrafted world. We have seen what we shouldn't do in times like this. But we cannot run away from these things except you help us. You are the only one that can help us not to go down. You are the only one that can help us at the point of weakness and tiredness. You are the only one that can make us not to have a decayed strength. And you are the only one that can make us to say no to the speakings of satanic voices. You are the only one in times like this. Various voices from the pit of hell. And so we receive strength. We receive strength from you in the name of Jesus. We say that in times like this, we will not decay. In times like this, we will not go down. In times like this, your word 
will be in us. Father, you will help us to always create time to go in and sit with you. So that we'll be able to commune with you. Thank you, Lord, for our children, wherever they are. They will not be corrupted in the name of Jesus. In times like this, you will make an edge of fire around them. No evil friend will corrupt them. Thank you, Hitana Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, King of Glory, for your servant whom you have used to bless us thus far. Lord, we pray that you bless him in return in the mighty name of Jesus. We request for him more revelation as you continue to lead us in this thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, you have used him to encourage us. We pray, encourage him and encourage his family and ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, he has blessed us indeed, we pray. Father, beyond his expectation, we pray that you reach out and bless him in return in the mighty name of Jesus. He came to us to lead with revelation and with testimonies. Father, by the time he shall be coming again, Father, he will come with fresh testimonies to the glory of your name in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for your children, those who you have been using to put this program together. Our technical crew, Father, we pray, bless them in return in the mighty name of Jesus. Enlarge their coast in the mighty name of Jesus. Because they have come to render services unto you. Mighty God, we pray, Lord, bless them in return in the mighty name of Jesus. So that for what they are doing, you will grant them fresh testimonies. Father, we worship you. Blessed be your holy name, O God. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.